my dear students and friends, and to all who follow our channel, yesterday I had the incredible privilege and zechut, the merit, to travel together with a few friends to the holy cities of Meron and Tveria in Eretz Yisrael, where we took a mini tour of the various grave sites, the various kvarim of the tzaddikim, of the righteous rabbis of yesteryear. I wanted to offer you a chance to see and to feel the Holy Land, the grave sites of these tzaddikim. And Be'ezat Hashem, I hope the clip will be inspiring to you and that you'll learn something. But especially, I hope you will feel from me that I truly prayed for you. I had you all in mind, although I don't know all of you by name. But in my mind, I just prayed that all those who follow, whether on the YouTube channel, on Torah Anytime, or on Ohel Sara's site, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Hashem should bless you all with tremendous strength, with prosperity, sustenance, health, with tremendous rachamim, mercy, and that He should guide you all towards the proper path of truth, of justice, and Hashem's ways, and that we should all merit to see you here in the Holy Land, the Karov, very, very soon. I wish you all an amazing Shabbat, and Be'ezat Hashem, I hope to see you all here very soon. Hello everyone. I'm just letting you know that I am now on the way with a few friends to Meron. To Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, to Rabbi Meir Balanes is also in Tveria, we're also going there. To the Ramchal, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato, to Rabbi Yochanan Asandlar, we're, also, we're going to the Shla Kadosh, and the Rambam, Rabbi Moshe Ben Maimon, and we're going to dive in. For everybody, all the followers on YouTube, all the Ohel Sura people who log on to Ohel Sura, all those who tune in on Torah anytime, and have you all in mind, Be'ezat Hashem. Hello everybody, we just arrived in Meron. As you can see, the sign that says Meron and Kever Rashbi, Rashbi's grave site. As you can see, there's a... Lots of people coming already and getting ready for this coming Wednesday night and Thursday, the Hilulav of Bishimon. Right over here is a huge yeshiva Mekubalim, a big yeshiva that they established a couple years ago. They built uh, in honor of the Rashbi, of Bishimon Bar Yochai, where there are mystics who sit and learn here all day long. Hopefully we'll get a chance to go in there and film something inside as well if they let us in and we'll continue our journey. I am now going into the yeshiva of the Mekubalim of the Rashbi. If they let us in, let's see. Going in, this is the entrance to the yeshiva. How gorgeous this is. Built in honor of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Going from here. And thank you. And this is where the men, we can't go in to disturb their learning. You could see through the doors that these are the men that are sitting and learning all day in honor of the Rashvi. As you can see, it's a big room. People sitting here and learning how gorgeous it is inside. Let's see if we can get a focus picture here. So you can see more people learning, more men sitting and learning. This is on the way up. It's a whole two, three flights of steps going up. This is a special room where certain parties take place for those who donate every month to the yeshiva. If there's a, a family affair, like a brit milah, as you can see, there's a chair here for Eliyahu and Navi. They get to have their event here in this big room. And right here, take a look at the ceiling of this room. 
where the Brit Milah takes place, this is the ceiling, is an image of Ma'arat HaMachpela where the Avot HaKadoshim, Avraham, Yitzchak and Yaakov together with their wives are buried. It's gorgeous, the ceiling is. This is the way down, we're going out, going backwards, we're going down. Look at this gorgeous painting. By the way, I was just told that this painting over here, which is on glass, was actually painted on the glass itself. How gorgeous this is. This is the yeshiva. Now we're going to go down. Downstairs is a hall for ladies, especially built for ladies who want to make shiurim. As you can see, they set up here very nicely. I guess there must be some kind of a fair. There is a shear taking place right now. And obviously these ladies are not so religious, but um, they're being taught right now about the holiness of the place and why this is such a special place. Inside the yeshiva, they made a special room, very eerie and cryptic, that's supposed to resemble the cave where Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and his son learned for a period of 12 years. As you can see, they keep it dark, low ceilings, as if it's a real cave, and we get a chance to light candles over here and pray. This is just incredible. I've never been here before. We are now making our way into the actual grave site of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai to the ladies section as you see it says Nashim which means women I'm gonna go through there and into the actual grave site here we're progressing into the ladies where it says Bruchim Habaim which means welcome to all, to all who come as you can see there are women who are already davening here Let's see what's going on here because they they changed things since the tragedy last year. But here there's a table set up for whoever wants to make a blessing, which I'll do right now. Starting with Mezonot. Right here, this is the area for the ladies for Abishimon Bhagavai where we dive in. And right here adjacent to him is where his son is buried, Rabbi Elazar, his son. I brought with me a few bottles of oil that in the schot of Rabbi Shimon that we're going to give out at the party, at the celebration next week, Wednesday night. And I'm going to take a break now for a few minutes to daven. Right here, as you can see, women are davening. I'm going to take this bottle of oil, there's a few more. We're going to daven with it right by the kever and give out the oil this Wednesday night, Bezat Hashem. Okay, everyone, we have just arrived. I just finished uh, davening at the Tziyun of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, which is over there in this direction over here. Look at this gorgeous view. They are now building, they're continuing to build. And we went up this long road to the very, very special gravesite, the Tsiun, the Kever of his colleague, the Tana Rabbi Yohanan Hassanlar, who's a very, very big tzaddik. As you can see, there's his name. And sadly, 
because so many people gravitate to the kever of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, which is over there, nobody really pays much attention to this tzaddik. And very often this gravesite is pretty abandoned. So I always make it a point to come here and visit the tzaddik. As you can see, some of my friends are here also. I brought them with me. Um, and it's a big schut for whoever comes to Meron to please come to Rabbi Yochanan Hasanla first and then go to Rabbi Shimon if you can. I'm gonna dive in here with a bottle of oil as well and uh, continue our journey. We're still at Rabbi Yochanan Hasanla. This is uh, um, just some words about him, but here, the last thing that they wrote about him is this incredible Maase that happened where Rabbi Elazar ben Shamon, Rabbi Yochanan Sandlar, that went out of Eretz Yisrael to learn with a specific Gadol, Yehuda ben Betera, to learn Torah from him. When they got there, they realized, you know what, we're outside of Eretz Yisrael. And when they remember they're outside of Eretz Yisrael, they started to cry. They started to cry and tear their clothing. And what does Rabbi Yochanan Sandlar say? Both of them said, Amru, they said, Yeshivat Eretz Yisrael, settling in Eretz Yisrael and living here, Shkula Keneged Kol HaMitzvot Sheba Torah, is as if you are, um, you are observing all of the commandments in the Torah. That is the importance of living in Eretz Yisrael. If you remember, we spoke about that quite a few sessions ago. Incredible. We had just left now, we have just left the, the kever of Rabbi Yochanan Sandla. I wanted you to see the magnificent view of Meron. Look at this gorgeous, mountainous view. I mean, the truth is, is it any wonder that the tzaddikim came here to learn? I mean, this um, a heavenly spot. Look at the heavens. Wow, this is truly special. Look at look at mountainous region. Gorgeous. We are now making our way down to where we parked, which is all the way down like a good 15-20 minute walk. Because they closed everything right now. And we are heading to Tveria, which is also a very holy city, to the gravesite of many other righteous tzaddikim surprise on the way out of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's caver meaning when we came out from Rabbi Yochanan Hassan Lar we come down this pathway mamash across the tzion of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is an interesting grave site that people seem to skip over which is the great Tana Rabbi Yeva Sava who is actually written in the Zohar Kadosh where Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai tells a story concerning him that he used to be a businessman meaning he used to sell um, his house housewares um, in the Gentile sector at least that's what I heard it, it seemed when people spoke to him as if he knew nothing nothing of Torah, nothing but when Rabbi Shimon but when Rabbi Shimon had a convers deep conversation with him, he, he understood it was made known to him that this tzaddik over here has great insight, great Torah insight, and he's really, really a righteous, righteous man. So he's considered actually a Tana from the times of the Tanaim. Interesting. Okay, well, guess what? Another surprise right next door to this Tana. Another great tzaddik named Rav Ada Saba, who we just learned is really Rav Acha Saba, also a big, big tzaddik, uh, who was from the time season Amora, is actually after the times of the Tanaim. It's said about him and his brother that when their father divided the Yerusha, the inheritance. There were no witnesses needed between them because the rabbis decided that these two 
um, Rav Ada Sava and his brother were such honest people that they could divide the inheritance equally without anyone having to interfere because they were such honest men. That's right next door to the Tana, Rav Yeva Sava, which is Mamish next door to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, just so you know if you ever come here. We are now on the way to Tveria, as I said, to a bunch of grave sites of holy, holy Tzadikim. We're going to be there about 15 minutes, Be'ezat Hashem. Hashem, we're going to David. <laughs> Guys, to your left is the gorgeous Yama Kinneret. It's the Kinneret uh, Ocean. Uh, it's quite, quite a holy sea. Um, you could look it up. Actually, the big Tadikim talk about it. The Ariya Kadosh used to spend a lot of time over here. It's in Tveria. It's huge and it's... it's um, it's history. It's a very, very holy body of water. The Zohar Kadosh, the Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai actually tells us that the Be'er Miriam, the wellspring of Miriam, is hidden and buried in the Kinneret. So it's a very special body of water. Okay guys, check this out. This is the Kinneret from a close-up. Look at this gorgeous sight. Check this out, this gorgeous, gorgeous view. Ways made a mistake, <laughs> we calculated wrong, so we ended up over here. But as you know, there's never mistakes, <laughs> which means that we needed to be here in this spot, oh, not too far from Rabbi Meir Balanez. Gorgeous, look at this. Ah, look at the sky. We are now heading towards the gravesite, the Tziun. The cover of the Holy Rabbi Meir Balanes. Okay, we have arrived at the Tzion, the cover of Rabbi Meir Balanes. I have the bottle of oil with me as well. Over here, we're gonna dive in. This is the entrance. That's the actual Tzion. We're gonna go in. Okay, just a quick, quick picture here that you gotta see is that on the right of Rabbi Meir Balanes, if you. If you go to your right, meaning if I'm facing the Tzion, look at this site. The Kinaret is right there, the mountainous region. Wow, gorgeous. See that? That's what we see on the way out. Oh, you can't get any better than this, guys. This, they have a special room over here where you can light a candle for Rabbi Meir Balanes, but, but with shemen, with oil, which is a lot richer and a lot more uh, holy. Mehudar. So we're gonna light one right now. Everything is um, ready here for you. We're going to put this into the oil. And right before we light, we're gonna ask this prayer over here. Leilui Mishmat Rabbi Meir Balanes. Right? We're gonna give tzedaka in a second. Hareni Madlikan Ner Lichvod Atana Kadosh Rabbi Meir Balanes. We're having you all in mind. Sfutoi again alenu. Kadesh Abisfuto, Yatsilenu Kadosh Bafu Mikol Holi, Mikol Tsara, Vetslichenu Bakol Masei Adenu, Vinea Briim, Vishenim Veraninim. Amen. Eloha Derabi Meir Aneni. Eloha Derabi Meir Aneni. 
אלוהה דרבי מאיר ענני. I'm having you all in mind, Kedosh Baruch Hu should send you רפואה שלמה, נחת, בריאות, פרנסה טובה בשפע, הצלחה מרובה בכל מעשה ידיכם, all the good in the world, שב יישוב הדת, Kedosh Baruch Hu, tremendous clarity, שלום בית אמיתי, if anyone here needs a zivug, בעזרת השם הקדוש ברוך הוא should bless you with a zivug, anybody here who needs פרנסה טובה, anybody who needs a זרע של קיימא, a child, בעזרת השם, in the זכות of the צדיק רבי מאיר, he should pray on your behalf in the שמיים. We are now in the actual room where רבי מאיר is buried, I believe. That side where you see the wall is where the men's side is. That's where the actual grave site is. We are going to pray by the ladies right here. And I'm going to have you all in mind. I'm going to go closer if we can. This is the ladies section. I want to have you all in mind. So we just came out of the grave of the Kever of Rabbi Meir Balanes and I want you to see this gorgeous site again of the Kineret. It is just magnificent. It's now Masha. It's now seven o'clock at night. The sun is about to set and this is our view. I mean, you can't get any more holy and an incredible sight than this. Wow. Oh, I wish you were all here. I wish you were all here with me. This is the Kever, the grave site of the Holy Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair alama shalom, who, according to the Zohar Kadosh, was the father-in-law of Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai alama shalom. Although the Gemara does state that he may have been his son-in-law, many Chachamim do agree that he was indeed Rabbi Shimon's father-in-law. Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair was a fourth-generation Tana who excelled in the mitzvot of Maaser, tithing, and Pidyon Shavuim, redeeming captives. Now, at Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair's kever, on any given day, you could see people circling the stone wall seven times. And whether you're young or old, everybody knows that circling this site seven times while reciting the 91st Perik of Tehillim is a special segula. It's a channel to receive brachot blessings and really the more we learn about Rabbi Pinchas the more we see the merits with which he earned this special role of helping to direct our heartfelt prayers uh, even the prayers of the simplest Jew to deliver them to the right address in the loftiest chambers in the heavens the Gemara of Cholin tells us a story of how Rabbi Pinchas commanded the river Ginai to split for him three different times. And when his students asked him in what merit that happened, besides the merit Rabbi Pinchas earned because he was on his way to perform the mitzvah of Pidyon Shavuim, of redeeming a Jewish captive at that time, his students wanted to know if such a miracle could happen for them too. What did Rabbi Pinchas answer them? He said, it would work only if you are certain that you never hurt another person's feelings or harmed anyone in any way during your entire life. Imagine that. If Rabbi Pinchas was so flawless in the area of Ben Adam Lechavero, Chachamim tell us his animals were not simple four-legged creatures. As a matter of fact, there was once a famous conversation that took place between the Talmidei Chachamim who were comparing the various generations. And they noted that while the earliest generations of Tzadikim were likened to angels, to Malachim, later generations merited only to be called Bnei Adam, humans. And still, they said, later generations by comparison to the earlier generations 
were likened to donkeys. And they said, and not even the donkeys of Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair, who are credited with instinctively knowing to eat from a food that wasn't properly tithed or separated according to Jewish law. That's the level of the animals of Rabbi Pinchas who taught us that any problem that we face in regards to what seems like a personal difficulty of life is merely a result of not performing the mitzvot properly. Now, although Rabbi Pinchas's era marked the sixth and last generation of Torah scholars known as Tanaim, a very famous story is told of how his essence appeared to the Yari Kadosh Shalom. This is a fascinating story in which one day the Yari was sitting and learning with his foremost student, Rabbi Chaim Vital Alav Shalom, when all of a sudden the Yari jumped to his feet just as a young man entered the room. So Rav Chaim Vital couldn't understand this display of great honor that uh, so formidably was given by the Holy Ari to this young and relatively simple young Jew. So the Ari told Rav Chaim, I stood up because I was welcoming the neshama, the soul of Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair, who I saw hovering over this young lad's head. Wow. This is the greatness of this holy tzaddik. Hi, girls. <laughs> okay, everyone. We took a break to have supper, but now, look at this evening time. It's now 10 o'clock at night. We are by the tziun, the kever of the amazing Tana, Rabbi Akiva, and the Ramchal, who they say about the Ramchal that was a Gilgul of Rabbi Akiva. Uh, that's why the Ramchal only lived 40 years of his life in order to be mashlim, to complete the 40 years that Rabbi Akiva, the first 40 years of Rabbi Akiva's life, that he wasn't able to learn Torah. The Ramchal was able to complete and therefore he passed away and therefore they are buried one next to the other. And we are now going to the Ramchal and I just, I got, you have to see this view from here. Wow, this is gorgeous. These, this, oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna take a, a video when we get to the top. Okay, I am now at the top of the hill approaching the Kever of Rabbi Akiva and the Ramchal. Take a look at this gorgeous, gorgeous view. You just, wow. Oh, it's just stunning. Look at this. I'm gonna pan to the right, where you're going to see right here, this is the grave site. You see the two blue domes. One is of the Ramchal and one is the Rabbi Akiva. We are now walking towards the Tsiun, the Kever. Wow, we have to thank Hashem for this amazing opportunity that He gave me to go with my friends today. We are now entering, look at this, gorgeous. Right here, this section, there is a Bet Midrash for anyone who wants to sit and learn or to pray. There are steps that lead down to the grave site of these great tzaddikim. Right there is the view. Look at this. I, I, you can't really see it, but believe me, I do, and it is magnificent. Here we already have some people praying here. Come here at all hours of the night. There's one tzion over here, one kever, and on the other side there's another one. Let's see what's going on. Okay, we are now entering the Tsiyun of the Holy Ramchal, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato, as you can see here. Ramchal Kadosh, Or Geula. I just finished davening by the Kevel of the Ramchal, and I noticed that on his Tsiyun is written something that he wrote as you can see, it says here, Mesilat Yesharim, his Sefer, Mesilat Yesharim. And listen to what he writes. Ha'adam lo nivra elalit aneg al Hashem. 
Uh, man was only created in order to reap joy uh, concerning his creator. Velehenot miziv shchinato, and to enjoy the presence, the holy omnipotence of Hashem. Shezeu hataanug haamiti. That is the ultimate pleasure. That is the true pleasure. The haidon hagadol bechol haidunim. This is truly the biggest pleasure and the biggest ma'ala that could be for a person that should find in his own life, which means to enjoy the closeness that one reaps from his connection to the Creator. That's what he wrote. That's the greatest pleasure. No other pleasure but being close to Hashem. Okay, we are now in the Kever of Rabbi Akiva, which is adjacent to the Ramchal of Kever. As you can see, the Pasuk Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad is written on the stone wall because he died with those words on his lips when the Romans executed him. Uh, as you learned in the previous class, Rabbi Akiva was one of the ten martyrs who passed away in the most gruesome way, al Kiddush Hashem. On the other side is the Siyun. left the area of the Ramchal and Abi Akiva and we drove down about an eight minute drive and we are now at the Kever, the grave site of Rachel, the wife of Rabbi Akiva, who is a very very special woman. She's the one who helped her husband become the scholar that he became, the Talmid Chacham. And devoted most of her life to ensuring that he learns Torah because he didn't wasn't aware so much of what Torah was was considered an Am Haaretz he didn't know even an Aleph bit so we are now going to her grave site going to her kever I'm gonna dive in here here we are we're inside the grave site Kevel, this is the Tzion of Rachel, Eshet Rabbi Akiva, as you can see it says here, this is the tomb of Rachel, the wife of the sage Rabbi Akiva. Let's read to you what it says here before I turn off the camera. Matzevat Kvurat Rachel Alea Shalom, this is the grave site of Rachel. Bat Kalba Savoa, the daughter of Kalba Savoa, Eshet Hatana Kadosh, the wife of the holy sage Rabbi Akiva Ben Yosef. She was the wife of Rabbi Akiva, the son of Yosef. Alea Mar Rabbi Akiva, her husband Rabbi Akiva said concerning her, Sheli Veshalachem Shelahu, meaning all the Torah that the students and I learned belong to her. Shrota dagan alenu. Torah shalamadati veshalamadatem bishrota. And all the Torah that we learned is in her merit. This is the holy woman, Eshet Rabbi Akiva. Okay, something very interesting over here by the tomb of Rachel Eshet Rabbi Akiva. I see there's a well and a sign underneath. Look at this. The well of Rachel the Tzadeket, the righteous, the wife of the Tana Rabbi Akiva. Notice what it says. This is a well whose waters possess healing powers which served as a drinking water reservoir and is fed by three springs that dry up during the rainless summer season. Very interesting, by the way. Rabbi Sharabi of blessed memory, Alava Shalom, he was a big Mekubal, wrote in his book Birkat Eliyahu that Miriam's well is found in the Kinneret, in the Sea of Galilee. We spoke about that in the previous clip. It flows to the wells around the lake 
to bring salvation and healing to all who need it. Tveria, uh, Tveria's elders tell how a glass of water from this well brings blessings and health to the person drinking it. And many people come back to thank for the great relief they experienced after drinking from this well. Right now, since, it's, since it is the summer season, it's a rainless summer season, there's no water in the well. But look at this. There's water that comes up at some point. Very interesting. Very fascinating. Ladies, I hope you enjoyed the little snippets of Kivrei Tzadikim. I hope my tefillot for you and all of Am Yisrael will come to fruition and that we're all zoiche, that we all merit tarachamim, mercy, berachot, blessings, and yeshuot, salvation. I wish you all a Shabbat Shalom and